Hi, my name's Rob. Welcome to the latest video here on Facebook where I'm hoping to give you an extra couple of language tips after the latest episode of Word on the Street. And if you watch the latest episode of Word on the Street, you'll know the answer to our latest quiz question. Those names that you saw are all names, typical names really, of pubs in the UK. And uh, this latest episode of Word on the Street was, of course, about a night out for Stephen and Ashley, which included going to a pub. Uh, quite an interesting episode, I think. Again, perhaps for the music as much as anything. Uh, but as usual, I'm going to talk about the language. I'm going to give you... Actually, I'm going to talk about a couple of examples of language from this episode. And plus give you maybe one more little learning tip to help improve your English. But before I begin with that, just remember if you didn't see the latest episode, you can follow the links with this video to watch some of the clips on the British Council's Learn English website. So don't forget to check that out if you haven't seen the episode. Okay, the first piece of language I'm going to talk about in this video is something that Ashley said when she arrived at the club with Stephen. Now, probably it was obvious from the way she looked that she didn't like the music. But did you hear the expression she used to say that? She said, this really isn't my kind of music. And I like that expression. It's something you can use in lots of different situations. This really isn't my kind of place. This really isn't my kind of thing. This really isn't my kind of car. You can describe lots of things with that expression. And it always means something like, I don't like it, or it's not something I want to do. So uh, I would say, for example, dancing really isn't my kind of thing. Uh, or painting really isn't my kind of thing. They're two activities I don't really like. And I, I like this expression because to me it seems a little bit indirect. And I, I feel that people from my country often are a little bit indirect in comparison with people from other countries, from more direct cultures. So to say that something really isn't your kind of thing uh, is a kind of indirect way of saying you don't like it. Uh, you can say as well, it isn't really my kind of thing. So really can come as well after is or isn't in this case. The second piece of language I'm going to talk about is something you may have heard twice in this episode. Firstly, uh, Carmen, when she was in the pub talking about British pubs, uh, she offered to give the pub manager a hand, to give him a hand. And also when Carl, that is Ashley and Stephen's friend, was in the pub with Ashley and Stephen and Caroline, he offered to give Stephen a hand with the drinks. So to give somebody a hand means, of course, you can guess from the context now, to help them, to support them in some way. And you can use it in the same way you use help, to, to request help, so to ask for help. Uh, could you give me a hand? Would you mind giving me a hand? Or just, would you give me a hand, please? And you can also use the expression to offer somebody some help too. I'll give you a hand. When I get there, I'll give you a hand. If you want to continue saying what it involves, then you can use the preposition with. So, I'll give you a hand with the drinks. I'll give you a hand with cleaning the house. I'll give you a hand with your homework. Right, my final tip in this video is not about language actually, at least not about any expressions or phrases, but it's another tip related to your strategies for learning. How you learn English. It's so important to think about how you're going to learn English. And this tip is that you review regularly. All right, so I've already spoken about the importance of noticing language, the importance of also actually making a note of language, keeping a record of it. 
So the third thing in this sort of strategy could be as well to review regularly. Now, even if it's just for a few seconds each day, literally 30 seconds looking at a list of words is better than nothing. Of course, it's a lot better if you're going to do maybe something more engaging than that. So if you're really going to think about the language, if you're going to try and use the language, or if you're going to perhaps try and do some activities related to the language. But if you only have 30 seconds, if you only have a minute, that's fine. Use it. Look at the words. Remember the form. Remember the spelling. It can all help. One good idea might be to set a reminder on your phone to check every morning uh, or, or perhaps make it part of a routine that before dinner you spend five minutes looking at what you've recently studied. You can decide whatever works best for you. For some people, a reminder on the phone will just be annoying or irritating and you'll just want to switch it off after a few days. But for others, it can be really useful and actually really important. If you, if you have a really busy life, it's good to get those reminders. All right, remember, one of the ways you can do activities to practice all the language you're learning is to go to the Learn English website, uh, follow the link with this video to find the clips from the latest Word on the Street episode and also to check out other related language activities there. And uh, don't forget to watch the next episode of Word on the Street and then I'll see you here on Facebook afterwards. And one final thing, remember, coming up soon, or well, not that soon, but soon enough at the end of this series, uh, I'll be doing a live Q&A on English. So if you have any questions uh, related to English, you want to leave them. If you want to leave them in the comments below, that's fine. Or if you want to keep them for the live event, that will be great. Watch out for the date and time of that event.